the soundtrack to Happy Valley. You guys play the best music. Greatest music ever. You guys rock. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna party tonight. Cause honestly, I just don't care. 4.5. It's all hit B94.5. I'm here with Phil Sullivan, the most recent alumni on America's Next Top Model. Hey, Phil. Hey, Angela. How are you? I am great. How's it going with you? Oh, phenomenal. Good. All right. So we're just going to start talking about your elimination, actually. This was your third week in the bottom, and Tyra said that it was kind of just for the same reasons. You looked kind of feminine in the face, not very masculine. So after being in the bottom for the third time in the road, did you kind of see this coming? I can't say I saw it coming. I felt good after the runway challenge. You know, I, th- I think the, the focus more so wasn't so much on the photo. I was more disappointed in the fact Marvin, you know, apparent pick that he got in a challenge score for not even booking any casting. I didn't know that failure to book anything results in a six. The six sounds pretty good in life. The photo, uh, I mean, I've always got a feminine face, you know, that's, that's my mom's song. I'm just the one who, who bears it. It's tough, too. You, you don't select your photo at the end of the day. You never know. There could have been a masculine face in there. So when we were watching the elimination, afterwards, Tyra started to present the comeback series. And it was a little bit strange because it almost sounded like she wasn't eliminating you at first. And it also looked like you felt the same way, too. What was going through your head at that point? Well, well she was like, oh, you are eliminated, but you can come back. And I, the, the first thing I said was literally, I don't think they, they put it out there, but I said, tell me more. And the next thing you know, all the contestants roll out from the back. And I'm like, oh, hell. It was just kind of shocking when you find out that Alex is coming back, you know, because you just crushed. It was like two times in a row I got destroyed, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then they show the Bali trip, and you're just like, oh, man. It was cool, though, to know that, you know, me, Mike, and Jeremy got to, you know, sit next to each other, and just our fate was in uh, CW's hands. So were you expecting both a boy and a girl to come back? They announced that Alex is definitely coming back, but then Tyra said that you guys actually have a chance to come back as well. I wasn't expecting at all that there would be more than one comeback. I thought it was just the highest social media score comes back and that's it. So when they announced Alex, I was like, well, that's it. So much for that. Right after you did get eliminated, you got to join all the other models and see everybody again. And you also got to see Gianna, actually. Now, do you still kind of talk with her? Because you did have a little bit of a friendship relationship. Do you talk with her still? Are you guys still friends? What's going on with that? No, I haven't talked to Gianna um, at all after the show. I really don't have an interest or a need to put her really in my life. I think it's one of those scenarios where you're stuck in a house for two months, who do you get along with best? Who can you have a civil conversation with? I think it was kind of stressful, you know, knowing that I was in a relationship this whole time and, and all I ever did was talk about Zoe. Gianna knew that. I think it was definitely blown out of proportion and it was upsetting, but I signed up for this. So another thing that you signed up for was obviously getting a makeover. Everyone gets a makeover and yours actually was chosen by social media and some people have actually also called it Jesus Chic. Now, what did you think of your makeover after you got it done? Did you like it or did you you hate it. I loved it. Midway, though, that was the struggle. I, you know, I looked like literally a Raggedy Ann doll or a Cabbage Patch doll. I had a fear of how I would, you know, photo with long hair. I've never had hair that long. I think it was cool. It was like a reemergence of confidence. You know, I felt comfortable with it. It was definitely cool. I think that was my first impression. And then as the week progressed, the maintenance on it was really tough. Getting to the hairstylist, they really honestly sometimes didn't even know what to do with it. Even on the trailer park one, they didn't even touch it. I showed up to the trailer park and they just put me on set. Everyone else is doing hair and makeup, and they're just like, nah, those hair is great. It was cool. I, I don't mind the whole Jesus thing. Anytime someone say Jesus Christ, I just respond to them with, yes, my child. So are you still rocking this look? And do you plan on keeping it for a while uh, if you still are? You no, know, the extensions ended up falling out over time, and they fell out rapidly. But I'm growing my hair out naturally currently, and my beard is full force currently. It's definitely one that you probably wouldn't let me babysit your child with this beard. So during the makeovers, a lot of the guys actually got their legs wet. It looks like you escaped this part of the makeover. How did they decide that you didn't have to do this? I wasn't really happy about it at all. Definitely actually put up a little bit of a stink about it. And I was like, look, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I didn't sign up for this. This is not what I'm doing. And A, Jesus has hair on his chest. So if you're going to make me look like Jesus, I'm going to play the part fully. I don't remember if on the episode if they showed the fact that I put up a stink about it, but I was not looking forward to what was about to happen. And I reinforced the fact that if you're going to make me look like Jesus, you're going to leave hair on my chest. All the other boys have got, got these little hairs. Here I am up to like a, a grizzly man out of the 
the woods, then I would personally go into the bathroom with shaving cream and a razor before anybody's going to wax me. And you're obviously one of the funny guys of the season, but some people and some models in the competition said that they didn't think that you took it seriously, kind of with, you know, accidentally breaking the fence during the challenge or tearing up the designer's clothes. What would you say to those people who are telling you this? I mean, I'm an impulsive kind of guy. I'm real. I'm not here to pretend to try to be anybody other than who I am. The hucking the rock is out of frustration. You know, I'm up on a fence, fell off the fence, and, you know, my hip pops out. And so I get upset, I throw the rock. There's nothing within 50 yards. The chances of hitting that fence, one out of a thousand. I get it. Okay. As far as the designer clothes, I think they really pushed that. I didn't know that cutting up an H&M black t-shirt was uh, forbidden. I guess I owe the designer $6.50, so put it on my tab. Sometimes you get creative. I could have cut off that t-shirt and it could have been the genius idea. Sometimes it's hit or miss and that's how I live. Some people like me, some people don't. My intentions aren't just to disrespect anybody and that's not who I am and I'll let the world perceive me as however they want to perceive me. So going back to the whole comeback series, now obviously they decided to bring back Alex, but they left it on a complete cliffhanger, you know, bringing back one of the guys. It was you, Jeremy, and Mike ending the last episode. Do you think you can give us any hints of what's going to happen next episode? I can tell you that a good-looking guy will be selected to come back. I think that's up to social media. It's in nobody's hands but the fans, which I think is great, the fact that they're being involved this year. And I guess we're just going to see who's got more pull. So after this competition is over and you're done with America's Next Top Model, what are your plans for the future? Take over the fashion world. I really plan on making an impact of just showing people and trying to influence people on really being yourself and allowing the world to work with you and finding the people that appreciate who you are for every moment that you have in life. I think it's tough being in New York City and this whole world is a judgment-based world and it's really focusing on passionately following your dream and my dream right now is to take over the fashion and commercial world with a beard and my ultimate goal is to pursue becoming a National Geographic photographer and traveling the world and catching every sunset from Bali to Alaska. Well, it looks like you have huge plans for the future and you have a solid fan base. How can your fans keep up with you? Do you have a Twitter, a Facebook, anything like that? The best way to keep up with me is going to be my Instagram. It's going to be what I upgrade all the time. I'm not really big on Facebook. My Instagram is going to be insight underscore Phil. So like insight Phil, uh, but there's an underscore in between. And then my Twitter is just insight Phil. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a blast to talk to you and we wish you all the best for the future. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Like us on Facebook at B94.5 Morning Zoo Crew.